Okay, I'm swerving when I pull up, ayy. Irving, how I pull up, ayy. One day see me stage diving, hands in the air like a hold up. Hey, yeah. Put up on the gas. Vandal to the metal, yeah. I like to drive it fast. They once hit me up like, call me when you coming back, yeah, yeah. You might catch me in the summertime shot. Cruising down LSD, yeah, love how I ride. I'm gonna be the man when I come round here. Hey, swearing, 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 Adding their longest winning streak since 1995, the Northwestern Wildcats are 1-0 in 2018. And for a fourth consecutive season, the team squares off against a familiar non-conference opponent, the visiting Duke Blue Devils. I want to see the line of scrimmage moving like so. I want to see us hit that quarterback as many times as we can. Okay, you understand where I'm coming from? Yes, hit him as many times as we can, all right? Let's go. Dan, you got it. Let's go, boys. Hey, yeah, boys. Let's go. Hey, you guys want to earn respect, go out every single play. Hit him in the mouth. Let's go, Dominic. Let's go. Dominic, I'll do one, two, three. Dominic. Duke won the toss and deferred at two resurgent programs over the past decade. Battle once again here at Evanston. The Wildcats were clicking early with the sophomore running back igniting the offense. Third down on the run. Larkin into space. Jeremy Larkin inside the five and a first and goal Northwestern gain of 40. Gets it Larkin straight ahead to the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. Once again, reps at quarterback were shared by TJ Green and Clayton Thorson. The defense braced for an aggressive second quarter by Duke. All right, fourth down, Duke. They're going for it. Fourth and three at the Northwestern 32-yard line. Big play here. Snap to Jones. Wants to throw. Winds up throwing the far side. Broken up. Broken up. Montre Hardage. And the Wildcats turn away the Blue Devils with 10.52 to go into the half. Duke missed its opportunity early, but wouldn't miss during the rest of the half, scoring three unanswered touchdowns. Jones, over the middle, touchdown Duke. Touchdown. TJ Ramming for a nine yard score. Jones' pass is complete to TJ Hey, gotta hit the reset button now. Obviously we started the way we wanted to, but didn't respond. Gotta take care of the ball, all right? You guys are coming out second. We got five squad right now. Yep. Defense has gotta get the stop. Let's go, dude. One series at a time. Oh, yeah. all right, let's go. Led by last year's Big Ten sacks leader, the Northwestern defense kept Duke scoreless the remainder of the afternoon. And Harris play fake, hit from behind, down he goes. Second sack of the day for Joe Gaziano. Senior Flynn Nagel's career day kept the Wildcats in the game. Deep ball down the middle. Is caught first down and then some Flynn Nagel. But in the end, the win remained just out of reach. 
uh, you know, from a standpoint of the, the response by our defense in the second half, I thought they went out and, and uh, you know, obviously responded very well. So a lot of work to do, very disappointed. Uh, a lot of season ahead of us, and I know the character of the group in that locker room, I expect that they'll respond. And uh, that's what I talked to them about after the game is I expect them to respond and do the things that winners do. And that's come back to work on Monday, get ready to get coached, get ready to get these things fixed, and uh, get ready to uh, get back at it next Saturday. Stay together on this. Hey, DB, pride on three, one, two, three. DB, pride. During the offseason, the Wildcats traveled north to Wisconsin's Camp Kesem for a very special day. I'm down for the cooking. Yeah, y'all got to show me how to, how to make these things. These things look really good. Do you want jelly? Okay. Um, I want you to take this one over there and get some jelly and then come back over. All right. Oh, sandwiches. Some sandwiches. Yeah, no problem. You play football? No, I play basketball. Basketball, you a hooper? I hear that. So we need to have the camp counselors uh, that are Northwestern students and to find out that quite frankly all the camp counselors throughout the country are, are students and it's student run uh, organizations. We felt like it would be a great opportunity for us to partner up as a program. I feel like a narwhal. Bye buddy. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> Do unicorns make normal sounds like horses or is it is it is it more, more magical? No, more mystical? Okay. These are your, it's the Northwestern. The Northwestern Corps? That's pretty cool. Pretty good. I feel like it probably sounds like Beyonce. Well, in a broad sense, uh, Camp Kessem is a great opportunity for, for young, uh, young men and women that have been unfortunately affected by cancer, by losing a family member, especially a parent. And, uh, you know, to, to be able to give back is what our program is all about. And uh, to be able to put right some now, smiles, hopefully, on some faces through some tough times. Uh, and then share maybe some experiences that some of our players have had uh, and uh, that I've had personally. So we're honored to be here. We're excited to be here. And, and uh, it looks like the guys are having a lot of fun. High, low, low, killing it. Oh, all day. All day with it, Patty. All day. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. The sun and the moon and make the world. All right, so we need one line over here. Let's see if I can play quarterback. Let's see it. It's a hike. There you go. Spike it. There we go. Um, Kim Kesson was by far, hands down, the most fun I had all summer. That was the most special part, just seeing everywhere, everyone there having fun, not worrying about, not thinking about what had happened in their past, you know, putting everything aside and just having fun and just kind of letting that, letting that out the picture, you know. The bond of losing a family member to cancer is one that linebacker Patty Fisher shares with these young campers after losing his father, Stephen, who passed away in 2010. Having been able to see him after a game since I was in fifth grade, you know, I didn't get to see him all throughout middle school, all throughout high school, all throughout college, you know, so it's tough, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy in my heart that he's, you know, he's watching up in heaven, you know, and I, I believe that. Um, and it's tough, you know, at, back in high school, we'd, We'd all come out of the field house after the games and everybody would get a warm welcome from their moms and their dads. And, you know, I, I get to see my mom, but just, just missing your dad, you know, that's someone who's brought you up in this world. It's tough, you know, it's, it was the hardest years of my life having to go through that. And then the after effect, you know, not having, you know, our Sunday family dinners and at, at, the, at the dinner table and Christmas together and Thanksgiving together. And, and all that and just to be there for those kids and at least try to help with them let them vent to me or tell them that they're you know they're not the only one you know look at me like I'm just like you just a regular human being but we're different because we've gone through things that other people haven't and we've overcome these things and so just to be an inspiration and a role model in that aspect is 
that's what makes me happy. You know, that's what I think I'm, I'm on this earth for is, you know, more than, more than just football, but just to be inspiration outside of that and show that if, if I can do it, you can do it, you know. It was Fisher's father who was the inspiration for his journey to the game while growing up in the heart of football country. He had the biggest influence because he'd drive up and down Highway 90, right where Katy High School was, right by the tracks. And he'd tell, us, he'd tell my mom every day, you know, this is where I want my boys to go play. I don't take any of this for granted. It's tough to, you know, because I never know when my last day will be. I never know if, if this is a genetic thing that I may have one day. And, you know, I'm going to miss these days if I sit here and complain and, and you know, not want to be out here with my, my brothers playing ball. You know, so I, a lot of them is with me, if not every, every single ounce of them is. Fisher's impact on the Northwestern defense has been evident, and in just his sophomore season, he was elected a team captain. I was, I was speechless when, when Fitz told me, you know, I didn't really know how to react. You know, I know in my heart I'm a leader, and I knew the guys could count on me. But just to see that come into fruition is, you know, it's really special. The natural born leader he is, uh, both on and off the football field, um, is special. And uh, it was a testament to him being uh, voted a captain as a sophomore uh, with three years of playing uh, ahead of him. You know, it's a testament to the natural leader he is. You know, I was at a very young age and, and it's kind of thrown this curveball, right, that I was ducking in the, the batter's box, right? I didn't really know how to hit it until the day where I had to mature and man up and then had to use all of that as fuel to my fire, you know, to keep me going and push me through life. Um, you know, I think that has almost 100% of what it, of, of his past experience of, of why I push myself so hard and why I continue to fight and to never give up. Yeah, we're just awesome. in those two seats there. Sure. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm Lisa. Jordan, nice hey, to meet Jordan. you. Nice to meet you, Jordan. Nice to meet you, Jordan. On Fridays, select players and staff meet with the television broadcast crew to discuss the upcoming game. This week, it's seniors Flynn Nagel and Jordan Thompson. You know, uh, there's a lot of guys on on defense that if they don't talk, you know, they're they're talking by their actions, right. um, and those guys, you know, they'll step up to the challenge and and they'll do what needs to be done. Um, right. Which is a good a good dynamic. On the call this week are former Wildcats Lisa Byington and Dan Persa, who preps for the game by picking the brain of his former offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Mick McCall. But we've all been there. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out yeah. of control. But I what think, are you guys doing? To I think the of... biggest thing is. It's a process. Clayton getting healthy is a process. TJ getting better as a quarterback is a process. And I think sometimes everybody just wants to oh, snap your fingers and he's the guy, you know, and it, and it doesn't happen like that. And I, I think that's, that's just our society period is like that. Everything's got, you know, and it doesn't, you got to go through some things and learn a little bit. You got to learn a little bit quicker. That would be good, but it is a process. You know, we're challenging each and every one of them to be able to do that. You right, know? but as coaches, you can yeah. only do so much. You're not in the locker room, nope. you're not Clayton. No, nope. I'm not on the field. Right, you're not on the field. <laughs> we're it's, not. You know. All those, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. Guys inside the locker room, somebody has to step up to a standard, and, and you go. Who are the guys on offense that... You get one of these a week, and you get 12 guaranteed. This is one of our guaranteed games tonight. Flush last week, didn't happen. We're done. It's over. But you got a chance tonight to go out and avenge that. Yeah. You got a chance to go punch somebody in the mouth yeah. and do something about that. Let's go. You can do it tonight. We can go out there and make this our best game of the year today. Come on. We can go out every day and attack. Let's go. We can attack them and attack them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. The Wildcats came out on the attack with 
call relying on his offensive line and calling the number of Jeremy Larkin to carry the first half workload. Now, Gets a block, cuts it up across the 45 to the 50. Thorson to Larkin, bounces off a tackle. Jeremy Larkin is in a Northwestern touchdown. And that's the way the Northwestern punched it in. Jeremy Larkin keeping his feet, showing great balance. The offensive line doing a great job as well. Northwestern's defense kept Akron out of the end zone in the early going, giving senior Clayton Thorson plenty of opportunities in his 42nd consecutive start. Thorson rolling out this time. Deep throw and a wide open receiver finds his man. Pass connects Kyrick McGowan for the big gainer. Thorson again, very systematic. One more time, Skoranek. They're going to say he got a foot down inbounds. Larkin will take it right. Larkin inside the five to the end zone. Touchdown. Second touchdown tonight for Jeremy Larkin. And while Thorson is making the right checks, you can add another check to his Northwestern resume. Now he fires, downfield, caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Cameron Green. A yard deep in the end zone. Beautiful throw from Clayton Thorson. His 45th touchdown pass. That is a new Northwestern Wildcat record. And the Cats lead it 20 to 3. The Wildcats push their lead to three scores by the half. This Northwestern defense has Akron on its heels right now and has really been playing very, very well uh, since halftime of last week. Akron, however, would start pushing back. For Pat Fitzgerald's offense, the attack was now coming from the air at a record number of attempts from his quarterback. Thorson to the end zone. Touchdown, Northwestern. Cameron Green, number two. Undaunted, Akron began its comeback. As Nelson floats it up. Touchdown, Akron. Maverick Wolfie. And after consecutive turnovers, the Wildcats found themselves down for the first time in the game. As the deficit grew to a pair of scores and time running out, Northwestern was faced with a critical fourth down. Thorson in trouble. In the chase. Throws it to the back of the end zone. Pass complete touchdown. What a play. Skoranek's touchdown catch extended a glimmer of hope for Northwestern and set the stage for a Hail Mary shot in the final play of the game. And it is. Broken up, incomplete. Uh, the Akron Zips have come into Ryan Field and knocked off the Northwestern Wildcats. We got a damn good football team. Yeah, we dug ourselves a hole. We put ourselves in a difficult situation. But the character that's been shown in this group in the past has been when we get backed into a corner, we come out fighting. Okay, we come out fighting. We don't feel sorry for ourselves. We don't point fingers. We all take individual responsibility and we work our tails off to get it fixed. As we put ourselves into this situation, guess who can get us out of it? We can. We can. We can. But the number one thing you got to do is you got to stick together. Okay? When everybody else starts to jump off, that's when a band of brothers really has to show up. In times of triumph, it's easy. In times of adversity is when your true character shows up, when a character in this room shows up. And obviously, we didn't get the outcome we wanted tonight, but we can fix it. But we have to believe, number one, in ourselves individually and trust ourselves, and two, collectively, that we can get it done. We had a lot of guys make some big-time plays tonight. And I'm sorry that your effort went in, in, in for not. But lift those guys up, congratulate them. Congratulate, obviously, the effort they made, because they made a bunch of big plays that obviously swung momentum in the second half. Because we had a great start to the game, didn't we? Came out, did the things we wanted to do. Maybe didn't finish, but you got to tip your hat in the second half. They got after us. 
we fought back, and we got a shot to win the game at the end. And we were one play away. That showed great resolve. So yeah, this hurts. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, guys, and it should. But the answer is in this room. You guys believe me? All right, let's fix it, okay?